Ohio was at the forefront of a large part of the action of the War of 1812. Important battles took place in Ohio, not only on land, but also large-scale naval battles on Lake Erie. Militiamen from Ohio first saw action in the war at the Battle of Brownstown and the Battle of Oak Woods in early August of 1812, but those battles took place in the Michigan Territory. However, just about a month and a half later, the Battle of Marblehead Peninsula took place. It was the first battle of the War of 1812 to take place on Ohio soil. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and recently we visited the historic location of part of the Battle of Marblehead Peninsula, and we wanted to share its amazing history with you. At Family Tree Nuts, we make history videos all over the United States, so if you like these types of videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the bell to get a notification when we post a new video. A group of 18 Ohio militiamen were transporting supplies on four boats from the Portage River Stockade to Camp Avery, which was located in modern-day Milan, Ohio. On the evening of September the 26th, 1812, heavy storms set in, and the group stopped for the night at Bulls Island, which today is known as Johnson's Island. The next morning, a local farmer, Valentine Ramsdell, and his son showed up at the malicious camp and told them that their farm had been attacked by Indians and that they had barely escaped the eight miles to meet up with the militia. A few of the militia accompanied Ramsdell and his son back to their farm and witnessed 47 Potawatomi warriors still in camp there. The men returned to the rest of their party and decided to go to Cedar Point and send a message about the situation to Camp Avery, which was about 10 miles away. Yes, that's Cedar Point the current location of the famous amusement park. When the messenger reported the situation to the camp's commander, Joshua T. Cotton, he ordered 64 of his men to finish their meal and then they headed to Cedar Point. Some sources say that Cotton had 72 men. The next morning, the men rowed across the peninsula and hid their boats in the reeds and left eight men to guard the boats. The militiamen split up and hoped to drive the Potawatomi warriors into an ambush on both sides. When they arrived at the Ramsdale farm, the enemy was no longer there, and they had killed most of the family's livestock. The fires were still warm, so Cotton decided to give them chase. Ten men were left behind to gather the harvested wheat and return to Camp Avery with it. As the militia pursued the Potawatomis, they entered an area with a field of tall grass about as tall as a man's waist. The waiting warriors rose from the grass and fired upon the militia, and the militia returned fire. The first battle of the War of 1812 on Ohio soil was officially on. Small skirmishes took place over the rest of the day and early the following morning. Cotton, being unsure of the strength of his enemy, decided to retreat back to Cedar Point. The fighting was thick on their retreat because the Potawatomi had circled behind them to block their access to the bay. The American militia managed to break through the line and make it back to Lake Erie. But when they arrived, they discovered that two of their boats had been found and destroyed by the Indians. The men that were left to guard the boats had escaped with the other two. The men were now trapped with the lake at their back and an unknown number of enemies to their front. It is now thought that the Potawatomi had a force of 130 warriors. The militia found an abandoned cabin and fortified it to hold off the enemy in hopes that they would be rescued. Two days later, reinforcements arrived and rescued the hungry but alive 37 Americans. Thus ended the first battle of the War of 1812 on Ohio soil. The militia suffered eight men killed and varying reports say 30 to 40 Potawatomi were killed. The battle is considered a draw. Sometime much later after the battle, the bones of the eight Americans killed were gathered by Horace Ramsdell, and he buried them near the side of the cabin that was used for a fort. Horace's younger brother, Valentine, was one of those killed in the battle. A monument was erected in 1857 by United States Senator Joshua Giddings, who at age 16 had fought as a private in the battle. You can visit the monument 
and the graves today. Another interesting story related to the battle is the cabin that the militia took shelter in. For many years it is thought to be the cabin of Benajah Walcott, a Revolutionary War veteran who first came to the area in 1806 with a party to survey a 500 acre plot called the Firelands. The Firelands were used to give land to settlers from Connecticut whose homes were burned by the British in the Revolutionary War. Wolcott returned to settle in the area in 1809 and became a successful farmer. In 1822, he was 60 years old and had his stone house built on the site of his original cabin. The house still stands today about 500 feet from the battle monument and the graves. It is said that it is the oldest still standing house in Ottawa County, Ohio. Also in 1922, Walcott was named the first keeper of the Sandusky Light, now known as the Marblehead Lighthouse. Still in use today, the lighthouse is the oldest continuously operated lighthouse on the American side of the Great Lakes. It is also the first lighthouse on the Great Lakes to have a female keeper. When Walcott died in 1832, his wife Rachel took over the duties. It is said that the Marblehead Lighthouse is the most photographed building in all the state of Ohio. Like many things in history, there is some debate of if the cabin fort was the cabin of Benajah Walcott. Some scholars today think that the cabin was owned by a man named Patterson, which stood on a plot that Walcott didn't own until after the battle took place. The Battle of Marblehead Peninsula was a small group of skirmishes in the beginning of a largely forgotten war in American history but it should definitely be remembered because the area was of extreme importance. And just a little shy of a year later, the Battle of Lake Erie, also sometimes called the Battle of Put-in Bay, took place right off the shores of this same area. That naval battle, commanded by Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry, was a major win for the Americans that directly led to their victory in the war. So what do you think? Had you ever heard of this battle before? Do you know much War of 1812 history at all? Would you like to see more videos about the War of 1812? Or is this a boring subject to you? We'd love for you to leave us a comment below of your thoughts. We are proud to share the history of the Battle of Marblehead Peninsula with you, the first battle of the War of 1812 on Ohio soil. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.